Hello and welcome to this edition of Ringside Digest. I'm your host, Kirk Day, along with my co-hosts, Noburn and Nick Miller. And in this video, we're going to continue the series of what teams should do next. And this one, we're going to go over the Minnesota Wild, my favorite team, as you probably know by now. So we got a few things to go over in this one. But before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content from us. We're going to continue the series throughout the rest of the playoffs as the teams start to get more eliminated. And we're going to go over the ones that have already been eliminated. And uh, you just got more more content coming down, down the pipeline. It's going to be very exciting. So if you want to see it, make sure to subscribe. And uh, I hope everybody had a good Mother's Day, you know? We have, I'm sure we have some mothers out there watching, so have happy Mother's Day to everybody watching. So we're going to go right into, into this video now. We're not going to waste any more time. What's next for the Minnesota Wild is the question of this video. I've got a list here. I, I think I'm going to go over the m m most of it as the resident Minnesota Wild fan. I, ha I have five things here of what I think we should do in this offseason. I want to get your guys' input from it. So number one, I think that is pretty obvious for this one, is re-sign Philip Gustafson. He was our best player pretty much all this year. He had an incredibly, he was probably second best goalie all year, point, like stats wise, in uh, for games played, because him and Flurry split the time pretty much. Gustafson was the second best goalie, so we got to re sign him. The thing is, though, we are limited on cap. As you can see here, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. We have here uh, 963K right now, and going into the offseason, starting next season, we have 8.2 mil. And Gustafson has showed his worth this year, probably getting more than the Minnesota Wild are able to pay him. But Dean Evason and Bill Guerin have both said that they're going to do what they can. They want to keep him, and they he's an RFA. We're going to try to do what we can, and he knows that what kind of situation we are in right now. I would like to see him re-sign for like a, a kind of a bridge deal, you know? Because we do have Jesper Wallstead. Not keen on him, though, starting right away. Because I don't want a Carter Hart situation where you rush him in, and he's not ready, and he just kind of... You know, you know what it does to him. But I think that's what I want to see first. The main priority is Philip Gustafson getting re-signed. I also have getting a center. I mean, you guys know, we've watched the playoffs. Center was a big, big loss this playoffs, especially with the loss of Eric Sinek, who was injured pretty much the entire playoffs. Played 16 seconds or whatever, 19 seconds. And it was a big loss. Big power, big penalty kill player as well. The penalty kill was rough. So a center on the penalty kill, make it a bit better. I do like those. Got some younger guys as well on this on this roster. I'd like to see them worked in a bit more. You know, we have a lot of them. I don't want to rush them in, like I said, with the Jesper Wallstead idea. But start working them in, you know. We had Brock Faber coming at the end of this year, coming out of college. Start working them in a bit more and get them going. So what do you guys think about those ideas? Like, I know you, you aren't as up-to-date with the Minnesota Wild as I am, but, like, those, those, I think, are pretty knowledgeable things for anybody in the round of the league who watched the Minnesota Wild this year at all. Yeah, I mean, I like the point you made about the bridge deal with Philip Gustafson. You know, I thought he was, well, other than Linus Allmark, I thought he was the best goalie in the league. You know, and I think he's a huge factor into why the Wild made the playoffs, if I'm being completely honest. So I think you could see him get a deal probably three or four million for three or four years. You know, that way, and like you said, I know you said uh, Jesper Wallstead is coming up too. It kind of creates a little bit of competition there, and I think, you know, that's that's when the best of the best comes out. So I think in three or four years when they're both you know at their peak that's when you decide okay who's the number one who's the guy we trade so you know i think i think the bridge deal is, is a phenomenal idea for the wild um in terms of the center yeah i think i think you, you covered it i mean uh, perfect you know we've seen how they matched up against uh, dallas there and they were they weren't the better team as you know they got eliminated but i think was did ryan hartman got injured as well he did, he got for one game he was out yeah yeah but even even one game, that's still your number one center down, right? So I think I think uh, the center will be a big position that the Wild need to address. Yeah, I agree with that. But first, the the bridge deal for Philip Gustafson, I think, is the smartest thing you could possibly do because, like you said, yeah, yes, for Wallstead coming up, and if you want if you want the bridge deal with uh, Gustafson, I mean, you get like two or three years. I I think I would do like a two or three years at three three point five four point five million around that area. I think that's probably what he gets at this point. Uh, if it's a bridge deal, maybe not. Maybe it gets more of it's a long term deal, but I don't. I, I don't think it's going to be a long term deal. Like the, I think they know what they're doing over there in Minnesota. So I would say the bridge deal is definitely the smartest thing. I agree with you there. Uh, for as for the center, I think the perfect guy, like as to what you're describing, that the Wild need. A guy, they need a, t a top six center. They need a guy that can kill penalties, and the guy is really good at faceoffs. The guy I'm thinking about, Ryan O'Reilly. He's the perfect guy for you guys to try to go after. Now, I think we were talking about this earlier that I, he's probably going to end up going back to Toronto on like a like a short, uh, lower AAV deal. But if he doesn't, if well, we honestly, it's pretty unpredictable what's going on in Toronto right now. But you know, that's another video we, we can talk about it another time. But 
Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, I think, is the perfect guy for you guys to go after this offseason. Yeah, I'm not opposed to the idea. And as you can see with our forwards here, we got a few expiring. We got guys like Nyquist, Sunkfist, and Ryan Reeves. Those three, pro like, I could see Oscar Sunkfist and uh, Gustav Nyquist probably not re-signing. But I, one thing I would like to do, not in my priority list, but I do have it on my list here, is re-sign Ryan Reeves. He's been a great locker room guy all season, as well as on the ice. He's played good. I think he had his career high in goals with like four this year or something with the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> but you can see there's a video of him announcing the locker room, uh, the, the starting lineup in the locker room. You just, like That's the type of guy you need right now. He's been around forever. He's been on a bunch of teams. He knows the way around. And there's also an interview saying he don't really want to move his family around too much more as his career is coming down to the wire. So you know, I would like to re-sign him for maybe even like two to three years. I think he would be willing to stay. He said he liked a group of guys. Pretty much, that's what I like to hear, you know? He's, he's been like, good on the ice. You need that type of guy, that physicality, which the Minnesota Wild do have, but there's nobody like Ryan Reeves in the NHL anymore. Not very many, you know? You have Zach Cassian, but that's pretty much about it. But I also have one more thing on my list here that's just, like, in the non-priority spot. It's with the defenseman here. If you can see him on the bottom there, Kalen Addison. I think we should move him. As an RFA, you can trade his rights, but he's been a bit... He hasn't been great this season, at, by any means. He's got scratched for, I'd say, close on half the year. Didn't play any of the playoffs that uh, Brock Faber came in. So I think moving Addison is also not a bad idea. It's been it's been kind of been teased around like the the Minnesota Wild uh like uh, reporters and stuff that he could have possibly gone at the trade deadline. Didn't end up happening, but I do see in this offseason being moved as we're probably not going to be resigning Matt Dumba or John Klingberg. Time to move in guys, you know, we got Ryan O'Rourke, we got Carson Lambos, we got Brock Faber who will be with the NHL team next year uh full time I would assume because he's played fantastic in the small samples which we did see him play but there's a few more things like that so what do you think about ryan reeves to signing and what do you think about the move of addison guys let me start uh, start with noah yeah you got to bring him back it's yeah. plain and simple you know i mean he is a pain in the ass on the ice but and i think like you said he might put up 10 points a season but like like what he brings to the team is is just unmatched you know you see like you said the video of him uh reading out the lineup he just motivates the guys in the room right like that's something you you always need somebody like that on your team, no matter your if you're a if you're first in the league or if you're thirty second, right? It's you always need somebody like that on your on your roster. Um, I do also, yeah, I do agree with you on the the Kalen Addison move as well. You know, I don't agree that I thought he was pretty solid. You know, like I think he's wasting away up in the press box. If I'm being completely honest, you know, I think he's a solid you know, second pairing guy while playing. I think he could possibly play the power play one. I really do. You know, he put up, I think it was like 30 points in, in 60 games or something this year while being scratched. You know, at the, for a 23-year-old defenseman who hasn't really much had much time to develop, I, I would take a chance on him, I think, 100%. Uh, I think he's a glorified Eric Gustafson, to be totally honest with you. I think I, I don't think he's that good. I, I think he probably had a little bit more potential a few years ago. Uh, but... Like, like, maybe he is wasting away up in the press box, but at this point, the Wild are playing with house money with him. They don't need him. They already have their top four pretty much locked in for next year. They've got Spurgeon and Faber on the right side. They've got Middleton and Brodeen. Middleton's a guy who they seem to like. I, I don't know much about him, but Kirk, like you said, apparently he was pretty good. He's solid. Pretty solid. Pretty solid there on the back end. So they've already got their top four locked in. The bottom two are pretty much interchangeable, like with the Wild. I know they've got a few guys they can bring up uh, in O'Rourke and uh, John Merrill as well. Yeah, John Merrill's there as well. So uh, I think that's that's pretty good for them. Uh, I, I think bringing back Ryan Reeves is a must as well. I, it doesn't seem like it's a must, but with the physicality he brings on the ice, the attitude he brings in the locker room, I mean, that that type of guy is like one, one in like a million kind of guy. Like there's very few like him in the NHL. I mean, you got your like Tom Wilsons or whatever, but the attitude that he brings, nobody wins with a bad attitude. So... I mean, I, I think that's definitely a guy you want to have in your locker room. Yeah, and we all take these uh, these ideas we have here with a grain of salt because we do know that the Minnesota Wild are in cap hell right now. As you can see, this year we had a 12.7 buyout penalty. Next two years, we have a 14.7. So there's not much we can do. We I just kind of said the ideas I think could happen with the limited cap we do have for these next two years because... It's not going to be easy. I, we, I thought about it pretty much all year, how good we were doing, how like pretty well we did in the playoffs for the first little bit with that penalty. If we didn't have that $14.7 that's any player. You can put any player for $14.7 on your team. That's a huge penalty. So, I mean, it's what we got for those ones. Like, There's not much we can do about it with that penalty, but we're going to have to work around it in some way. And those are the ideas that I thought we could probably see 
like coming in this year, uh, this off season and the next off season. That's all we got for this video. So if you liked it and you want to see more videos going over the teams of what they what we think will probably happen in the off season, make sure to like the video and also make sure to subscribe so you do see those videos when we post them because we will be going over them. So I hope you liked the video. Thank you for watching.